The spring flowering bulbs like tulips, daffodils, and hyacinths always get lots of attention because of their showy colors early on. Well, at our studio garden this year, we decided to create a summer bulb garden. So we've got a collection of plants here that either grow from true bulbs or bulb-like organs below ground. And just to start out with, back here in the shade, we've got some elephant ears and several different types of caladiums that we've planted in this area. And right up front here, we've got sort of these little frill leaf or small leaved caladiums that can actually handle a little bit more sun than the, uh, the traditional larger leaved caladiums. Right back in the back here, we've got a plant that a lot of us use in our water gardens. This is the Black Magic Elephant Ear or Black Magic Taro. It's a plant that has leaves that are so dark purple that they, uh, they look black out in the garden, but we've got some of those represented in our summer bulb garden. And then right down here, we've got something really neat, something really exotic. This is known as the blood lily. These are bulbs that are from South Africa, and this little sphere is made up of about 200 flowers that look about like this right here. And this sphere can be about six inches in diameter. But uh, we plant these bulbs in the garden and they usually flower pretty quick in the summertime. And once that flower stalk fades, they'll send up some leaves that are something like this. And the stems are a little bit spotted. But uh, we always have good success with these blood lilies in our garden. Right here in front, we've got some variegated society garlic. It's a plant that has a slight garlic fragrance, beautiful lavender flowers and that variegated foliage is uh, very attractive as well it makes a really good combination now there's also a green form of society garlic that will overwinter in a lot of areas in oklahoma uh, more so in the southern part of the state but the variegated one as with most variegated plants is not quite as vigorous so it's going to be a little less hard a little less easy to get to overwinter in your garden right up here we've got a unique type of gladiolus this is the Abyssinian gladiolus, very exotic looking. This is sometimes referred to as the peacock orchid, although it's not an orchid, it is in the iris family. But uh, we call them acidanthras, their botanical name. But uh, similar to gladiolus, you can lift that uh, gladiolus bulb in the fall and overwinter it like you would any of the other gladiolus. Got several other flowering plants that will have flowers later on. Right up front here we've got a collection of shamrocks or oxalis. You can see the different colored flowers and different colored foliage as well. We've got these purple oxalis over here with three leaves and then this one is oxalis tetraphylla. Tetra meaning four, phylla meaning leaf. So instead of three leaflets it's got four and you can see the little flowers there, little melon-colored pink flowers on that oxalis. We've got a lily of the Nile here that uh, still has a few blooms on it. A lot of these looked great earlier in this garden. Got some cannas back here, and of course cannas don't have true bulbs. It's more of a rhizome, but uh, very similar to a bulb. One of my favorite is this one down here. It's called Journey's End, and I just love that uh, pink and yellow coloration of the flowers. We've got some nice orange ones like this one. This is Tropicana Gold. It's got orange flowers that have a number of different colors there, making them up. And then the, the leaves also have this gold striping. Another really nice gold uh, orange one we have is Orange Punch, right back here with a really deep orange color to its bloom. I always like including the white ermine canna whenever I plant a group of different colored cannas. Something about adding that white really makes a great display with the reds, yellows, and oranges. Well, right up front here, we've got a Crocosmia, another bulbous plant from Africa. And we had this in our garden last year when this was a Plants of Africa collection. But this is Crocosmia masonorum, and it's giving us a really great display right now with those yellowish-orange blooms sort of floating above the plants there. These are uh, quite hardy, actually hardy to about zone four. So overwinter quite well in Oklahoma. Right back here, we've got some gladiolus. 
It'd be hard to have a summer bulb garden without including some of these. This is a really nice blue one called Rhapsody. Right up here we have a bicolored pink one. This one's known as Priscilla. And it's interesting how a lot of these gladiolus want to sort of face to the south. So we might keep that in mind when you plant them. Also, when you plant gladiolus, make sure you plant those bulbs at least six inches deep. That way they won't blow over as easy when we have some of those summer winds and storms blow through. Well, we've got a number of dahlias in our summer bulb garden as well, but one that we're really excited about that we tried for the first time this year is this one. It's known as Bishop of Auckland. And you may be familiar with the Dahlia Bishop of Landaff. It has the same purplish foliage, but the flowers are sort of a red-orange. But this has a nice violet or coral raspberry-colored flower in this Dahlia. Dahlia Bishop of Auckland. And one other bulbous plant I want to show you in this garden is right down here. This is Liatris. And a lot of people don't realize that uh, the Liatris plants come from a bulb-like structure below ground. But uh, we have a number of Liatris that are native to Oklahoma, several species. They have this interesting spike of flowers, and you can see that the uh, buds open at the top and sort of work themselves down. It's kind of different. It seems like a lot of these plants that have flowers in the spike will open at the bottom and sort of go up. But the Liatris opens from the top and goes down. Well, we will revisit our summer bulb garden a little bit later to show you some of the other plants whenever they come into bloom.